So you're reuniting with Woody Harrelson in your next film, which we know is called The Entertainment System is Down. What can you tell us about that? I can tell you everything. I can tell you how it ends if you want me to, but... Uh... <laughs> you may as well, but spoiler alert. Ruben, welcome to the Variety Lounge here at the Sarajevo Film Festival, which you kicked off a few nights ago with your new film, Triangle of Sadness, at the open air cinema. How was it to open the festival? It was beautiful. I had to do three introductions of the film. So I went from one venue to a very big outdoor venue and then to another little bit smaller venue. But it was a really great feeling. Uh, people were happy. A lot of people approached me afterwards and so on, and then you always get happy. It feels like a film that's made for a big crowd. Definitely, and that was the goal, I would say. Actually, I've been working quite much with test audience when I've been doing it. I wanted it to be like a wild, entertaining roller coaster have been the, the goal, actually. The ship is going under. When I was doing the cutting, I was a little bit in inspired of uh, John Cleese when they did A Fish Called Wanda, because I heard that they did 12 different like uh, test screenings just to fine-tune the, the humor and the dynamics in the end. And, and I did five, but it's so helpful to do that in order to understand how it works with a big crowd. Were you expecting the film to be as well-received as it is, or were you hoping to maybe shock and divide people a bit? Interesting question. Um, I, I like quite often when it is divided. You know, when I did my first film, when we had a DVD edition, then I actually had the good critics on the back side of DVD. And then when you open it, you had all the bad critics on the inside. So actually, when the consumer comes home and is about to put it in the DVD, they get to know, ah, worst film of the year. The film is dealing quite much with beauty and beauty as a currency. Show me that Balenciaga look. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm dressed in something way less expensive. It's H&M! Yay! Balenciaga! I think it has been interesting to, to talk a little bit with the f about the film with young people and older people. Because younger people, when I say, okay, we have this Instagram couple that they are together because it's a win-win, you know, they are a branded couple. Uh, young people are just going, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. what, do, what do you mean? And older people are like, oh, how horrible. Are they not together because they're in love? <laughs> you know? I don't think... It, I don't think it's cynical because I actually think it's more that they are rational and uh, uh, frank and, and understand that it's a, like a currency exchange also in couple relationships. Now your films are often about men trying to save face in a world where their status is changing. Do you relate to that? Do you see yourself in that? I relate a lot to be a man and uh, to be in a time where uh, the role of the man is looked carefully on and before it was almost like that it was a default normality that you didn't discuss and uh, all of a sudden like the male behavior had been been on in focus and i have always been interested in situations you know when i when i feel that i'm me myself would be cornered if i was exposed for this kind of setup i love situations where i don't really know how to to handle them and uh, and I also can identify with doing something really stupid. Most of your films have been satirical in nature. Then. Do you have a naturally comical view of the world? As soon as you step away a little bit from the actual person that is dealing with a hard or a horrible situation, it becomes comical. And you, and you step out and you look at the context. And um, uh, for an example, in Force Mayor, where we have this family that is on ski vacation, that in one second they are sitting on this terrace, the sun is shining, they are having lunch and everything is fantastic. And a couple of seconds later, they just scream in panic, basically loses their faces. Then they realize uh, oh, there was no catastrophe, so they have to go back to normal life again. I, uh, even though if you would see that in real life, it, everybody would feel horrible, but, but when you put it in a fiction world also, I mean, then you're allowed to, 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 to laugh about it. I mean, it, it may be harsher to laugh about it if it's real, real people dealing with it. I love to talk about the films because it gives me so much more knowledge about it when I'm, when I'm directing the film. And very often when I tell the setup of a film, then people tell me about similar situations that they have experienced. And sometimes I can steal them and put them into, into the script. The new film that I'm working on right now, it's called The Entertainment System is Down. And it takes place on long haul flights. I was thinking over 15 hours, maybe from London to Sydney or something like that. And quite soon after takeoff, uh, the crew is uh, announcing to the guests that unfortunately there would be no entertainment system on this flight. 
so all the passengers have to deal with not having the digital distraction that we are used to and uh, are left all alone with their thoughts. Uh, so I'm going to take a look on modern human beings when we are losing that, like the dopamine addiction that we have in our pocket. Uh, well, Ruben, thank you so much for joining us here in the Variety Lounge. Thank you.